Hey, I'm Pat Keegan and welcome back to the DIY Home Build channel. In this video, we're going to complete the mobile shop cart that we started as a kickoff to our Open Shop Friday series. And um, in this video, you're going to see me install the drawer slides as well as make um, a drawer. Um, in this space, this space is basically 30 and a half inches from top to bottom and uh, the opening rather. And so what I decided to do was to build three drawers, one which is five inches, one which is 10 inches, and one which is, you know, whatever's left over, right around 14 and a half or 15 inches. And so there's nothing magical about those sizes. It's just what I thought of. I basically wanted, you know, small, medium, and large. I looked around the shop and, you know, kind of know what I want to store in it. So th th those types of things kind of dictate, you know, the sizes of your drawers. As far as mounting the drawer slides, um, there's again nothing magical about that. In the kitchen video series, we since all the drawers were exactly the same size, we mounted them right in the center as I did with this one here, but you don't have to do that. But in general, um, you know, I just decided for these, I wanted them to be, I wanted the bottom of the drawer slide, the underside of the drawer slide, to be about two inches above the bottom of the actual drawer. I'm going to have three drawers, that means I'm going to have four total spaces, and on these I just decided to have a quarter inch of space between the top of the drawer and the top of the cabinet, the bottom and the bottom, and then a quarter inch of space, you know, real small space between each drawer. That's for two reasons. One, the plywood is dimensionally more stable than solid stock lumber, so it's not going to expand and contract as much. And before I, you know, I, you know, I may never get a chance to put the actual drawer fronts on this thing, but and I do want to maybe install some drawer fronts, but for now it's functional and it's going to work. And so um, it's try to keep as much dust out as possible. Um, as usual, uh, I'm a big fan of spacer blocks. I talk about these all the time. And so since I want the bottom of the um, drawer slide here to be two inches up from the bottom of the drawer. I made my first spacer basically um, basically two inches. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to set that spacer down and then I'm going to put the drawer slide on it and I'm going to screw the drawer slide in and then I'm going to set another spacer here which conform to the measurements. Again, you've got to go through a little bit of math to um, to figure out where you want them, um, you know, if you want to mount the slides first, you got to do a little bit of math to figure that out. But then I'm going to put the larger spacer here, another drawer slide, and then the final spacer here. And for our cabinet, um, you know, these, uh, and then put the final slide up here. And for our cabinet, these spacers are, um, as I said, they're two inches. Then I'm going to have an inch and a half here, then this is 13 and a half, then I'm going to have an inch and a half, and this is then, this last spacer would be eight and a half. And I apologize if my uh, head is getting in the way. I'm kind of not used to working at this angle, but this is the angle that we have. So, um, so anyway, let me go and install the slides. And, and before I do that, I just want to show you, we're not even going to take this uh, piece out like we did in the kitchen cabinets. Um, but as you can see here, you know there are basically slotted holes those are the ones we're aiming for and so if you pull the the you know the inner mechanisms on the bearings out you can see that you have a lot of room basically for each of those and you always want to put the the first few screws in the center of the slotted hole so that you can adjust them left right as you need to and then you can come back and put the screws into the um, into the round shaped holes so that once they're you know fully aligned um, so the first thing I'm going to do, the, the other thing I would mention is that in the kitchen video, since the drawers were solid stock, they were solid maple, um, I, go, I went ahead and drilled a pilot hole for each of those screws. But because this is plywood, I'm not going to drill a pilot hole. You really don't need to. It's just a habit that I've been into whenever I'm dealing with solid wood to go ahead and drill a pilot hole. And I, and I, I don't want to change that. But for this is okay. Um, it's not terribly, um, you know, it's not going to do anything bad to the cabinet. So I'm going to go ahead and just, uh, let's see if I can get a good view here. So I've, go, I've gone ahead and I've put my two inch spacer block down. I'm going to kind of open this up part of the way. Let's see here. Get the good, uh, oh, there we go. Okay, and then I'm just going to put this down like so. I want to recess the, let me push this in. I want to recess this front edge 
about a sixteenth of an inch back from this edge of the cabinet. Again, that just makes sure everything closes okay and I can always tweak final adjustments because I'm going to be using the slotted screw holes. So I just take the screws that came with the cabinet. I'm going to put three screws into the... There's one on there already. So I'm going to put three screws into the uh, carcass and then move on to the next one. Okay, I've got the three in on this side. I'm just going to repeat the exact same process on the other side. Okay, I've got all the drawer slides in and it literally took me about two minutes to get these in using the spacer blocks that I cut previously. They're very much a time saver and I'm very pro spacer block when I can. So now we're going to move on to the drawers. Before I actually show the, how we're going to make them on the table saw, I wanted to point out a couple of things. The first thing is pretty obvious to you is that we used pocket hole joinery for the drawers. Um, again, I'm using what I have in the shop uh, laying around in plenty and it's this, it's this pre-finished uh, three-quarter inch maple, so that's what I'm going to use. Um, I could have put the whole pocket holes on the side, but the reality is I'm going to be opening this thing probably a hundred times a day when I'm using it and I want the weight of the pull to be against the shear strength of the screw, which means it's going to be perpendicular. The screw's going like left-right this is going front back so the shear force is perpendicular to the screw that's its strongest point if I put the screws here on the side then all I have to do all I'm going to be depending on is the strength of the plywood and the screw that's embedded in it and I don't want to do that because if you've been working with plywood for any length of time you already know or have probably drilled a screw and and hit it where it just keeps spinning um, because you've hit a void so the plywood, you know, has a number of these gaps or voids inside the material throughout. And I don't want to be resting on that. I want to make sure that I have the shear strength. It's not as pretty looking as it would be if I covered the whole thing with one sheet of plywood running from all the way from the left to the right, uh, a single strip and, and done the holes on the side. But I'm not really concerned about looks right now. If I'm concerned later, I may go back and add a drawer front on top of this to make it look really nice. But again, this is a functional piece. It's supposed to be quick and efficient and practical to get it done and get it into use inside the shop. The other thing I'll tell you about the drawers, um, it's got a quarter inch bottom here. I suppose I can pull it out and show you. The quarter inch bottom is recessed in a dado that is grooved in all uh, four walls of the drawer and so we drill about a, a quarter inch or a five sixteenths inch groove all the way around on all four sides and I put mine about half inch up from the bottom since it's plywood I want to I want a little bit more meat here than a quarter of an inch or something like that um, and I'll show you how to groove those on a table saw again this video series is for folks who might not have a lot of tools or don't want to go out and spend a hundred and some odd dollars on a dado blade or you know don't want to have a, a, a router and a dovetail jig um, and all the things to make really really fancy drawers um, you know I would never do that for a client obviously we would have the dovetail drawers as I've mentioned in the kitchen video many times um, but anyway uh, it's just very quick and efficient to get it done this way so that we can get this thing into use as soon as possible. Before I start milling the boards for the dado, which it's going to receive the bottom shelf panel, I just wanted to point out a couple things about the measurements. I covered this in the kitchen video series fairly extensively, but I think it's worth just a quick retouch here. I've said before that for the drawer slides that we're using, they're 22 inch slides, and so I want to make sure that the sides of the drawer are 22 inches long just as long as the slide. It's just good habit, good practice to get into. This, the front and back pieces then have to be shorter obviously than the two sides plus the drawer slides. So let's do a little bit of math. The opening compartment is 23 and a quarter inches wide. Actually 23 and 3 sixteenths, but let's just say for easy math it's 23 and a quarter. So then I've got to take off a half an inch on either side for the drawer slides to fit properly. So a half inch plus a half inch is an inch. So instead of 23 and a quarter, the widest that the drawer box can be is 22 and a quarter. 
Not only that, but I've got two three-quarter inch pieces for the sides and I've decided to run the front of the cabinet into those pieces. So from that 22 and a quarter inches that were left over after taking away for the drawer slides, I've got to take away another three-quarter here and another three-quarter here. So that's going to be an inch and a half. So this piece here has to be, the front and the back piece has to be 20 and three quarters inches. So I've got two pieces cut at 22 and another two pieces for the front and back cut at 23 and a quarter. And I've already gone ahead and done that on the chop saw so we're ready to start milling on the table saw. 